Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Writer's Bookshelf. So today we got another bonus episode and I, um, I kind of miscalculated my thinking. I was going to have two bonus punctuation books after the um, Larry Brooks book and I forgot I actually have three really good ones. So um, I'm actually going to do a third bonus episode probably next week uh, just to kind of prime it. So the one I was going to do for this episode, I'm going to save for the next one. So I will have three additional bonus episodes not two uh, on top of the one that we ended with before so um that's cool that means you get more videos so congratulations you blocked out again um so the one i'm going to actually do today um is actually the first really good punctuation book i've ever read you may already know which one i'm going to talk about uh, because a you probably saw the graphic when the video started so um Again, I, I keep teasing these up as if you didn't see the opening. I don't know why I do that. Probably because I'm not looking at it. Uh, when it's not in mine, it's, you know, whatever. So you already know what it is. So it's uh, Eats, Shoots, and Leaves by Lynn Truss. Um, this is another classic. Kind of like the Strunk and White book that we did last time. Um, this is another one where... And I don't know if it's common nowadays. This is more like from like 2005, 2006. Uh, when did this, did this actually come out? Um... This is your favorite part, right? When I read the book and try to find out something that I didn't plan for. Um, yeah, it's my favorite part too. 2003. Okay. I've had it for a while. Um, I haven't had it since 2003. I've had it since I think 05 or 06. But anyway, it's uh, it's an old book now. I don't know that it's still common. Uh, but it is one that, you, you know, punctuation is not like trends. It's not like uh, uh, fashion. Like it does not go out of style. Punctuation is the same today that it was 20 years ago. Usually with grammar and language, they usually have more epic shifts than they do granular. So even though we add new vocabulary every year and, um, you know, there's always a you know, word of the of the year. Uh, the 2020 word was pandemic. I just saw on uh, Merriam-Webster the other day. Again, I'm still recording this in December. So I'm a little, uh, wherever you are, I'm kind of in the past right now. But uh, they just had Merriam-Webster's uh, uh, word of the year, and I didn't even have to look at it. I'm like, oh, I bet it's pandemic. And sure enough, scroll down, and there it is. Um, you know, language does have its moment of, of trending and fashion and all that. But for the most part, it, it's the same. Whatever it is now is what it was 20 years ago. So you could get a book like Eats, Shoots, and Leaves and still learn a lot. And so the reason why it's on my, my list today is because... This is one of the best ones out there, and not because it it does something different. Uh, the grammar is the same. You're going to learn the same rules in this book that you would, and um, the one we use for my college called the Bedford Handbook, um, or you know, or Strunk and White's book or whatever. I mean, you're going to learn a lot of the same stuff, but the difference is, is she gives you a story behind it. Like she, like each chapter, like I mean, she'll tell you you know what you should be doing, but each chapter. They're long chapters, actually. Each chapter really digs into the nuances of what the grammar does. But then here's the kicker. It's a funny book. She's a comedian. So she's basically... It's been years since I've read this. But I think I remember her being um, the grammarian. There, there's some phrase that she called herself. Um, it was like the... Uh, not a grammar Nazi. But it was some kind of like you know grammar... You know, snooty thing and, and so i don't remember the term but anyway but she calls herself that and, and she's going through and and goes through every punctuation mark and and explains it in kind of a story format and then of course shows you examples of how each one uses so uh it's not as um easily accessible as something like um strunk and white's book because it is based on chapter by chapter by chapter and you do have to get through some of the story in order to, to get to the example but the thing is, is Lynn Truss really explains it well. Um, I think she, where, uh, where uh, Professor Strunk is clear and concise, Lynn Truss gives you background. She gives you, um, and, she, and she also gives you a story. And she, um, and she does so in a humorous way. Um, it even says that she's a comedian in the back. So it's, um, if you want a good laugh while you're learning how to use commas, get this book it's it's a good one um it's timeless too the only criticism i would have on this particular book is i believe it was uh i believe she's english meaning her her use of commas might be different um but i think she addresses that too i think she does both the british and the english or the 
the American versions, if I recall. It's, uh, I think that's the way this works, but I mean, you're going to get all the information you need to um, be able to do commas and things well. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's Eats, Shoots, and Leaves. It's in the, of course, in the title, gives you the, um, the whole premise of what, you know, how grammar matters. It's like the old classic saying, you know, let's eat, comma, grandma, meaning you're addressing grandma, say, hey, grandma, let's eat, rather than taking the comma out and saying, let's eat grandma, because that's pretty horrific. Um, same thing with Eats, Shoots, and Leaves. You know, the panda can either eat what we call shoots and leaves, or he can have two different action or three different actions, eats, shoots, and then leaves. So um, that's sort of the point. Your punctuation matters. And, you know, regardless of whether you're writing a novel, textbook, or a text message to grandma, put your punctuation in the right place so that we know what you're talking about. Uh, it's important. So um, last thing is, I don't know what the versions are that are around today. Um, I believe you can still get this book. I, I know it's older, but I think it's one of those evergreen books that I'm pretty sure you can still buy it, although you may have to get it online now. I'm not, I don't think it's as commonly stocked in the bookstores like they used to be, uh, but it was in there for a long time, kind of like the Calvin and Hobbes Digest. You know, I think to this day you can still get Calvin and Hobbes at Barnes & Noble, even though it's been uh, you know, a finished series for over 20 years. But what's cool about this... Um, oh... I just realized I lost them on the comments. Uh, it comes with your punctuation repair kit in the middle, and I, I don't know if the new books have that. Um, I had, oh, you know what? I bet my sister took this. So I had a, it looks like one of my commas is missing. <laughs> there should be a sticker right right here. I don't know where it is. So, and I, I don't ever, you can tell I'm not a sticker person. So that might have been when my sister uh, was 13 and thought that it would be cool. I don't know. I'm guessing. I don't know what my sister did. She probably... Who knows? But anyway, um, it's, it's more interactive than a lot of your uh, grammar books, so it's kind of cool. But anyway, I just wanted to show that to you guys. It's a good book. Um, if you've never heard of it, it's uh, one you should have on your bookshelf, especially if you hate grammar but you want to learn from uh, someone who's hilarious. Um, that's the book to get. So anyway. All right, we're going to do one more uh, bonus uh, next week. Uh, again, I had intended just to do two. But uh, I forgot that Eats, Shoots, and Leaves is like a really important book. And so, you know, uh, so we, I kind of stuck that in there. But I, I definitely want to do my other book also. So um, I'm going to push season uh, three back. No, season two. Um, you know what? I'm probably just going to roll right into it. I don't know. It'll either be the third week or maybe the fourth week in March, depending on uh, how much time I need to put it all together. Might even be April. Um, I'm just I'm kind of speculating right now because I again I haven't even figured out what my list is going to be yet. So um, I'm I'm still aiming for the third week in March, um, which as of this recording or no sorry as of this viewing is probably in two weeks. But um, if uh, if it's going to be later than that, I just keep an eye out. Uh, I I'll probably still aim it for the third week. It's just that. Um, I kind of wanted a separation between the bonus and the season. You know what? No, we're going to do fourth week in March. I'm going to make an executive decision. Uh, so I want I want a week off between the bonus and then the official start. So it'll be two weeks after next viewing that we start season two. And I'll figure something out. So anyway. All right. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, do come back next week. We'll do one more bonus. And, and uh, the next one, it's going to be really useful if you are like in the news or if you're um, you know if you are a writer uh, a novelist um if you're you know, a student uh if it doesn't matter which branch you're in this one's going to help you a lot so it helps me this is the next one we're doing is the one i still use like the, these other two the strunk and white and these two and these I, I i rarely use them anymore like that was more for like when i was uh you know, back about 15 years ago when I was really starting to get going on this. The book I'm going to show you guys next week, that's the one I currently use, even now. So, come back. All right, all right talk to you later. Uh, uh, do all the YouTube stuff. Bye.